certainly allowed to help me. I will look into Bogart, all this video footage of my guy. <laughs> Into the garage now, though, or we're going to do the crawl of shame. You want to crawl through there? Uh huh. Cool. I don't know if I'm going to fit. Got it? Corbett. 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 Door, anyway. Um, I just throw it, I stick my head through and I throw it sideways, is yeah. how I do it. Yeah. Because it's much easier to do once it's there. I don't like leaving it laying because I always end up leaving it six inches further and you have to go through the door anyway. Yeah. Um. You got all the cams set? Yeah. You do the left side one, I didn't do the left. Yeah. We will see. Right? Uh, this is actually a little bit nicer setup. I haven't Can actually. Can you tweak it up a little higher so it makes sure that it's off the frame below? Oh, sure. That's interesting. I leave mine touching, so. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I don't think it matters. It's just sort of a. I don't want it to vibrate and make noises. Uh, You're leaving me feel a little bit uh, inept. What is 1851 with an eight foot ceiling for volume? I don't remember. 14,808. So we're going to go 15,000 just for fun because I've got the vault in my ah, yep. master. There's easily 200 extra there. Um, and. capture a baseline for the moment we're going to give it 20 seconds so that we have two 10 second time frames for reference we are going to leave that open for the testing Using Ford and Chevy here <laughs> Heathens. Heathens. I can't do that. I think that just annoyed the dosh. Right. Pressure flow. It'll be the same Probably hoses. pressure flow at 25. It would be um, the same hose connections that you do normally. Mm-hmm. Just yeah, here here. no uh, communication wire. Yeah. Well, we'll try it. Okay. Um, uh, once we get yours working, we'll just pull the hoses off of that and stick it on this. Okay. And if That'll it tells us too. the same thing, we know we're probably right. Yeah. I'm really hopeful that this system works. We're going to be depressurizing the ductwork or sucking all the air out and measuring how much air comes in um, with the duct testing equipment. All right. So today we're going to be running a blower door test at Stephen's house. And uh, the blower door is the most important tool in the toolkit of a home performance uh, uh, consultant or specialist. So what it measures is how much your house leaks. And most of the problems that you have in your house, so if you have rooms that don't heat or cool well, uh, or you have mold, or I'm from the north, so we have icicles and ice dams uh, after big snowstorms, most of those problems come back to air leakage in the house. So you can cover a lot of things up with HVAC, but oftentimes if you're going to deal with the root cause of a problem, you need to deal with the air leakage in the house. And to be able to deal with the air leakage, you have to measure it and figure out where it's coming from. And this is the tool for doing that. Um, and I should uh, talk about also what we call the five priorities of home performance. 
So when you are going to try and make your house more comfortable, healthy, longer lasting and efficient, the things you want to do in order are air seal the house, air seal the house, air seal the house, then we'll insulate. And the last thing we deal with is putting in the right HVAC system for the house. Uh, and if you do those in order, you'll end up with a very comfortable house that doesn't cost much to operate, that doesn't have moisture problems, and that is very healthy. So that's our goal every time with the project. So I've done a blower door test on this house before, but I didn't get any video of it. So what we're doing today is getting a total leakage of the house. We're also going to do a duct leakage to outside test so that we can see how much the leakage affects the total leakage of the house. So the first step is going to be blower door numbers with the duct leakage duct sealed and then we're going to run the duct tester to show how much leakage goes outside. So you'll understand where the leakage is. Exactly. Uh, much better in the house. Yeah. So this will be a good diagnostic test today. I'm looking forward to it. Awesome. So we're going to set pressure for the blower door at 50. And it's going to get a little noisy in here, but what we're looking for is um, 50 pascals on the on the top line, and then we're going to compare the CFM leakage that we get to what we had got originally when I did the test without um, without video. Yep. So I've got the door, the house at 50 pascals, and we're showing about 1900 CFM leakage, and our original leakage test showed 2114 at basically 50. Now the other shot that we got originally was air changes per hour at 50 and so we're going to show that as a comparative as well. So it would appear that by simply closing off the supply registers in preparation for the duct test that we have already reduced leakage almost a full point. Yeah, well, about, about 10% of the actual leakage. Yeah. So um, it would lead to, to prove that duct leakage in North Carolina can be a big part of improving your overall leakage of your house and when Nate talks about air seal, air seal, air seal, duct leakage sealing can be one of those continued air sealing processes in the North Carolina market. Speak to what the market in Ohio is specifically. Uh, well most of our duct work is hard duct so it's metal duct and it's all pretty much inside the house. So if it leaks, it's not the end of the world. You're leaking heat into the house, in, just in the wrong place and where you want to put it. But the problem is here, if you have ductwork outside the house where it's in your attic, if uh, you have a duct leak of air conditioning into your attic, you really have a double whammy. Uh, because not only are you trying to cool the attic rather than cooling the house as you're trying to, but that cool air that's getting sucked out or that's blowing out there's more outside air that's getting pulled into the house elsewhere that you then have to dehumidify and cool again. Uh, so sealing duct leakage is critical um, and it depends where you live, whether it matters or not. So in Cleveland, where I'm from, it doesn't really matter uh, for the most part, um, it depends on the house. But here uh, in North Carolina and the South in general, where HVAC systems are usually in attics or uh, vented crawl spaces, it's a big deal. So this is a good thing to test for here, where in my market, I don't care. I don't own a duct blaster or a duct tester. So we're gonna move forward from this um, as a comparative number, and we're going to set our pressure down to 25. I don't remember where we started and how many times Seeking I pushed the value, button. two more. 35. One more. 25. There we go. Okay, so we're going to seek 25, and we're down to about 12% blower speed right now, um, and we're going to go back to CFM flow. 
so that when we turn on the duct tester next, we will be doing a duct leakage to outside, and that will show us a comparative, once mm -hmm. again, of... Sorry? That's fine. Um, We're going to want that. <laughs> we will. Um, it will show us a comparative of the amount of leakage that the duct is specifically responsible for. So this is where we have to set it manually and move the gauge upstairs. Okay. So, so do we probably disconnect that? Yep. So that it doesn't know? Yep. We're going to just hit the dial on the side. You want to back up a little? Part of our uh, issue today is that I had ordered an additional gauge for being able to run the door and the duct tester at the same time. And since FedEx hasn't showed up yet, we need to set the door to 25 manually and then move the gauge to the duct testing equipment. So there's a knob here on the side and we simply turn it until we reach 25 Pascal. I think we've got it balanced out pretty well. We're at about 25 and change and we're showing a 1200 CFM leakage currently. So all we got to do is unplug the reference tubes and take the gauge up to the duct tester upstairs. All right, so right now we've got the blower door running at 25 and we are going to do a duct leakage test to outside. We've got all the ducts masked off and we've got the system set up to depressurize the same as the blower door is depressurizing. And the simplest way to do this is to get your door at 25 and then set, set pressure on the gauge to zero and press enter. And then the blower, the duct tester will run your Pascal pressure to zero and will show you what your CFM leakage is. That is crazy. I think we may have a ring problem because I was at 100% fan to, uh, to get that and I was at 4,000 CFM. Which doesn't make any sense at all. Which makes no sense at all. But Anytime my blower needs to get to 100% is uh, not a good thing. It makes your test less, uh, less capable of being accurate. So we've opened up the ring. Oh, that's my problem. I didn't change the device. Oh. So we had a little bit of a setup issue. Um, I forgot to change the device for the control and so we were running the blower door not the duct tester and so now I've got the device set to the proper device we're on an open setting and we'll see how that goes now if you just hit set on 0.0, .0 it doesn't do you any good you have to put 0 and press set and then the system will operate as it should I'll come in closer once it balances out I may have to put a ring back in now that I'm on the right motor. We're down to 5.1, 5.0. That's pretty amazing. That's so minimal cool. leakage. Yeah. I think I'm going to switch to the mid ring to. Uh, well, I'll give it a second. I, I get a little bit uh, hurry up and fix it. <laughs> but I'm having, uh, it's taking longer to go to zero than I had anticipated it would possibly do. We're floating around three, two and a half. Okay.
All right, so I'm going to change rings because we're floating at two and a half, and uh, we're not going to get there very easily. The leakage is minimal enough that the system is in need of a little more restrictor plate. All right, so we've got the mid ring set. We're going to set pressure back to zero and give it a few minutes to balance out again. Wow. That's almost worse. Am I doing something wrong? I mean, we're still creeping into the same duct leakage, but uh, we're at 10 Pascal instead of two and a half. And it's ramping up rather than trying to slow down. What I find interesting is that the fan speed is going up to match, um, to increase, we're increasing blower speed in an attempt to lower the duct pressure, which having never done this test before, it seems absolutely counterintuitive. And if your blower has to reach a higher speed to maintain a pressure, that typically means you need a ring, fewer rings. You need less restriction on the blower to be able to reach your, your, your number. So open was about what we have. Yeah. So it looks like it's probably going to hit 100% fan speed before it zeroes it. Yeah. So technically you need a ring in between. Uh, but the number you got before probably wasn't that far off. Right. Because it looks like it, if it could get there, which I don't know that it's going to, you're still going to get in the 190, 200 range, something like that. We're going to open it back up again and give it another chance because I feel like we're going to max out the fan's capacity before we reach 2 Pascal. Interesting. Very interesting. All right, we got the ring back open again. We're going to set pressure to zero. And we're going to give it another chance to uh, do its do its magic. So Nate and I are headed over to this client's property to give a rundown on total leakage of the house, duct leakage, um, so that we can proceed with um, coming up with a solution. Because what does Nate say about uh, not doing diagnostics? Crap, man. As soon as you ask me that, I can't think of it. Uh, um, Diagnose or prescription without diagnosis is malpractice. Yeah. So um, the client does have some ideas in mind because, as a whole, the HVAC industry talks solutions all the yeah. time. Yeah, you go straight to solutions. What's the shiny object? And the issue is that solutions without knowing that that's the problem is going to put you in a position where you can't prove that you actually offered a solution you charged him some money but you didn't necessarily actually do any good exactly so I am trying to step back from my typical which is HVAC and offer a real solution that is built on diagnostics rather than just throwing um, a customer packages that have no diagnosis behind them yeah, so at least you have some odds of success. That's what we're looking for. The client, his complaints are humidity issues. 
and run times under 10 minutes. Oh, jeez. So, as an HVAC guy, I immediately lead to the solution of um, oversize. Yeah. Which very well it's probably could gonna be, be the in case. the solution set, yeah. But if I simply downsize his equipment and go for two tons instead of three or two and a half instead of three or whatever, we may not actually get the solution that is most prescriptive. Uh, we, we need to do a, a good load calc, and a good load calc is going to require a blower door. So we're trying to build it out as a complete solution rather than just a package that says, yes, I'll install two ton air conditioners and you will get longer run times. For yes, sure. <laughs> We've had a good time today because Nate is um, from Ohio and in Ohio, duct leakage is basically a non-issue. Yeah. As the most part, homes in Ohio have ducting inside the perceived envelope of the house. <laughs> perceived is definitely a good way to put it. If there's sheetrock on the wall, people think that it's inside the envelope. Oh, it is, isn't it? <laughs> don't, don't tell me anything otherwise. I don't want to know that. Uh, yeah, but usually it's in the basements. Uh, and then inside walls is where most of the ducts are run. In northern climates. Do I know anybody from Rhode Island? I guess not. <laughs> so yeah, this morning was very interesting because uh, I've never done a duck blaster test, well with one exception, uh, but I haven't really helped set it up. So right. I, I felt like a fish out of water this morning. Yeah. Because uh, it's just such a non-issue for me. Right. Uh, so it was fun to set that up at your house, and now we're going to head for a client, and I at least begin to feel like I know what I'm doing. Right. So I'll be a useful helper. <laughs> uh, we did grab all the duct mask covers, vent covers and stuff, right? They're in the back. <laughs> yeah. I hope they are. The duct <laughs> mask? I, I didn't look for the tape. Did, I, you, did you load the tape? I grabbed the tape. And I saw the covers in the back. I got the duct tester. You've got your blower door. I think we're uh, as well yeah, you prepared. you got the, the, the red uh, shroud, right? It's in the back. The, uh, the, 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 the actual blower door, like the, the red shroud. Yours? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. As long as you got mine, we're good. Your lights on? No, when you open the door, they oh, okay. do their thing. All right, so I'm about to set the blower door up, which measures how much the house leaks altogether. And then we're going to test each one of the three HVAC systems in this house individually, and we'll get an idea of how much each one of those is a part of the leakage of the house. So this is gonna be a little bit squishy because with the house having three systems, we can test them one at a time, but they're probably going to be interconnected in different ways through different attic spaces and who knows how they're going to be connected, connecting uh, through rooms from one system to the next. So the numbers won't be hard and fast. This is where the art of this comes in as much as the science. Uh, so I've, I haven't done a test like this myself yet. Uh, so I'm curious to see how the numbers come out as well. Motor, so the motor's working a lot, um, a lot less.
set up on the third floor split heat pump and we're doing a duct test so we're going to set it to 25 and run the test as a total leakage once we get total leakage we're going to run the blower door at 25 and set the manometer for the duct tester to zero and that will give us duct leakage to outside just for fun, I'm going to drop the small ring in. And is this not a lot of square footage that it's doing? Mm -hmm. so the codes are oftentimes square footage based, and this is what, 500, something like that? It, it, it needs a ton of cooling. Yeah. And it's got a ton and a half, and yeah. which means it needs a ton and a half of ductwork, and yeah. it doesn't really have that. Well, it's not a hideous leakage for a system. Let's see what the other ones are. Yeah. Let's. Um, no, let's do the blower at 25. Oh, yes, thank you. Yeah. Okay, let me go get the blower to roll at 25. Okay. Right oh, my knees. Can't do that all day. What did I see? All right, so we're set up on the second floor three and a half ton system, and we're going to do the pressure to 25 and then also do the um, set to zero leakage to outside with the blower door at 25 and the gauge set to zero. We're on the mid ring. We're going to set pressure to 25 and see how it runs. We may have to go to full ring or full open on this one. Before we waste a lot of time doing that, I'm going to shut it down and go to no rings or full open. always waste time after we've wasted time. <laughs> that we've got all registers covered. All right, so we ended up with 225 CFM leakage um, total on this second floor three and a half ton system. And we're setting it to zero now with the blower door set to 25. And right now it's in the 130 um, range for leakage. So I would just shoot sort of uh, cowboy style and say that 
we've got half of our leakage on the second floor that goes outside, half of it leaks to the envelope. We were right at zero, and then it tried to modulate up, oh. <laughs> and it went to one, two, and now it's trying to drop back down again. Okay, so I see we have like 133 CFM of leakage. Uh, what is that of total system flow? The 131 is a comparative to about two five or six inch ducts. Okay. And it's a four and a half ton system, or three and a half ton system, mm -hmm. um, pushing 1400 CFM nominal. Okay. So it's one fourteenth of leakage, basically. They're about, or one tenth, maybe. Almost. Uh, almost one tenth. Yeah. So, so pushing one tenth of the leakage of the system, uh, or the flow of the system is actually going outdoors. Yeah. Okay. That's only 10%, right? One tenth? Yeah. Yeah. But 10% is obviously significant. That's, that's going to suck a lot of outside air Which in allows, to replace it. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, that's putting the house under some pretty severe uh, right. pressure. Actually, we should test that later with the blower door. We'll turn all the air, air handlers on and see how negative the house goes. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, that would actually be a good one. Okay. Let's try that later. All right. Let's keep going. All right, so we have the blower door set to 25, and we're going to set pressure to zero and hit enter, and this will give us our total leakage. This will give us our leakage to outside in comparison to total leakage. Which is interesting. I may need to go back to the mid ring for this one because uh, no, I think we might be. We'll probably be able to get it. All right, there's 25. That number is about the same as before. Yeah, that's nice proof positive that uh, leakage to outside is freaking leakage to outside. <laughs> Except for I'm sure that one time when it's not. <laughs> there's one thing I've found in this world. It's it depends is the only right answer. <laughs> right? <laughs>
you won't be able to see that necessarily, but um, at 25 we had 141 CFM set to zero. We've got just over a hundred. You got zero. Cool. All right. So now we have totals. And I figured out how to set the Minneapolis blower door. <laughs> okay. Action. So we're basically done here. I think. And um, we've got a lot of information to chew on and come up with uh, theories as to... And recommendations. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts on what we've seen so far? Well, the house wasn't obscenely leaky, so it's a good-sized house, you know, 4,000 square feet-ish, um, and the blower door was uh, 4,800, so it's, it's not a low number, but it's not obscene. Um, so it led me to think more that the HVAC might be more of what's going on behind the, uh, the high humidity plus the equipment replacement that he had done that obviously has caused some issues since then. Right. Um, and then we, we found out that the duct systems weren't spectacularly leaky, but almost all of the leakage was too outdoors. And that was a point that we had made on the way over here, or a thought that we'd had, was that leakage in the Carolinas is mostly outside yeah because duct leakage, the yep. ducting is outside yeah so the fact that we've proven at this point that i'd say a good 85 percent of the leakage is exterior aggravates all of his allergy issues all of his air quality issues and um, humidity control when as as you and i know when leakage is outside it causes infiltration mm -hmm. of uncontrolled air. Yeah. Um, so uh, it's a lot of information to uh, to chew on. I don't know what to do yet either. Um, that, that's part of the. A lot of people expect the experts to have pat answers, and this is what we're going to do. But you have me out of my climate zone. Right. So I'm literally out of my comfort zone. Like uh, <laughs> I'm sweating today. Uh, I'm not used to that. It's I, I started out in the slush yesterday, and it's 75 degrees here. Yeah. Um, uh, but uh, I don't know what the the answer is to this yet. You just have to look at the data and chew on it, and look at what the client's trying to solve. Uh, and then we need to have a chat with him about what the budget might be for this sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And begin to figure out how we match up what the house needs, what he wants to fix in the budget, and see what we can pull off that has a decent likelihood. Yeah. I think it was a uh, good time to, you know, get some good data. Mm -hmm. And as we've both talked about previously, you want to get data first. Yeah. You need diagnostics before you can come up with prescriptions. Yep. Um, so... Yeah, prescri prescription without diagnosis is malpractice, so let's not commit malpractice. Let's, let's give it our best <laughs> shot. <laughs> oh, goodness. Hey, guys, so we had this, I had this crazy idea at uh, 9 o'clock at night Saturday to see if we could do a leakage to outside blower door test on a section of the house. Similarly to how you do leakage to outside with a duct tester and a blower door mm -hmm. at the same time. But since we happen to have two blower doors here simultaneously, the one that I brought from home and yours, oddly enough, different brands too. Yeah, so um, we've got an opportunity to do this that as soon as tomorrow morning rolls around, I'll never get again until I invest in a second blower door or something. Or you get another geek staying at your house. Right. <laughs> so this is a once in a long time opportunity that I wanted to make. So what we're doing here is setting up this door to put my master suite under suction. We've got my door in the front door of the house, which is going to put the house under a 50 Pascal test. What we're going to do with this door is get it set to zero which is the same test we did on the ductwork that you saw previously, or in this video. Somewhere yep. it will have been posted by the time I post this one. Um, 
So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to get my door fired up and then we're going to fire this one and bring it up to zero. And what we're aiming for is showing a specific CFM leakage to outside. From your master suite specifically, which is, is that the leakiest part of the house? It is the leakiest part of the house, and that's what got this started. I said, okay, we've got a 38 of 50. I believe it was 38 of 50. It was it, it, a high percentage of my master is connected to outside. Yeah. And so I wanted to understand exactly how much CFM that was. Mm -hmm. Because a percentage of 50 simply says it's the worst. But it doesn't tell me exactly what it is. So it wasn't good enough for you to just close the door and check the reading down there. No, we have to set up two blower doors and try to figure this crap out. <laughs> anyway, enough, enough about the setup. We're going to go ahead and do it. So uh, I hope you guys enjoy. <laughs> that would make some kind of sense. Maybe. Well, that, that number at least jives for what that space could be reading. Right. Um, Are we pegged down? Yeah. So we're not going to get to 50 on a C-ring? Can we kick that door back open? Yes. Just because it don't want to affects it the whole door yep. number because my door downstairs definitely changed sound so 530 out of I'll get a time average for you. Let's average over five seconds. Okay. So let's go see what the downstairs is. Or the front door. Now we're pressurizing the master to 50. And the house is depressurizing to 50. So that cuts off. 1600 that about adds up because the house was about 2100 overall right, right? so 550 plus 1650 is 2100 so yeah. that adds up interesting okay so that, that makes sense though because the numbers jive see the door from your perspective? Yes. Like the gauge and everything? I can't quite see the gauge. Wait, here we go. Okay. You comfortable? Yep. All right. So we're going to set this set pressure to 50. Glamour shot up the stairs. <laughs> Barefoot and in a t-shirt. Yep. All right. Well, that's interesting because uh, it also doesn't have a cover on it. Mm -hmm. Do your thing. All right. You, sir, were correct. 
and it's not enough leakage to I gotta go to C-Ring That's going to tell us. Right. Oh, is the air handle off? Yeah. All right, V-ring, that's all she'll do. Actually, I'm going to turn it off, switch to my uh, uh, C-Ring. Yeah. So I finally get to try it. Yeah. You never played with it before? No, you have to have an awfully tight house before it becomes an issue. Okay. I don't deal with tight houses. <laughs> <laughs> not until the project's done, right? Well, even then, they're not that tight. We're not yeah. talking passive house. You need to do this and like a passive house, right? So, so it's nice that I actually bought this and we'll get to try it. That's amazing. I've never actually had it in. Pressure difference changed. That's interesting. Because it was seven before. Mm-hmm. So that's curious. Before we had two. Okay. So we ended up depressurizing the house and pressurizing the master. Yep. That was the only way we could get any numbers. Yep. That got us a reading at least. That dropped my front door blower to 1650 and change. Mm -hmm. From 2100. From 2100 and it showed a 550 roughly. Upstairs. Leakage in the master suite by pressurizing the master suite and depressurizing the house overall. 
and you have me on four hours of sleep, so I'm trying to chew through this <laughs> and figure out what the heck's going on, but, so, but the numbers add up. The numbers so. make sense, but it doesn't jive with what happens when you do a duct leakage to outside. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's questionable. I'm going to talk to Joe Madosh, and if you ever see this footage, it means that Joe didn't tell me I was an idiot. Yeah. Well, the other thing is duct leakage to outside, but that is just the ducts. What right. we just tested for, I think, is the total air leakage to outside of the master suite specifically. Right. Um, so those are two different things that we're testing in the house. And what we might see, and what Joe might say, is that the test is no good because the ducts weren't masked. Yep. But it's interesting information to me regardless. We're screwing around on a Saturday night. What the heck? Um, and this is what stupid guys do. <laughs> we have issues. It's okay. This is what home performance guys do. <laughs> Give us all too many tools and we'll be like, hey, so what can we test when we have two blower doors in the house? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. Like, subscribe, comment, and share. Check out NateTheHouseWhisperer.com. And Nate the House Whisperer YouTube channel. Nate the House Whisperer YouTube channel. He's working on a lot of new content for that channel that will be worth checking out. If you'd like to support the channel, please feel free to visit patreon.com slash Stephen Reardon or go to truetechtools.com and use the coupon code Reardon, R-A-R-D-O-N, for 7% off your purchase. We'll see you on the next video. Bye, guys.